Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this act of worship celebrating the feast of St. Fabian, Bishop and Martyr. Today our service follows the order of morning prayer, and it begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 35, the sentence for major saints. We give thanks to the Father, who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Our opening hymn, number 838. Exalt you, O God, our Savior. And praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Vanity, page 36. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let, let us shout, shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving, and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For, For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today. For he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In, In your, your compassion, compassion forgive, forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Psalm appointed, number 110, verses 1 to 4. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord will send the scepter of your power along with Zion, saying, rule over your enemies from the Lord. Princely state has been yours from the day of your birth. In the beauty of holiness have I begotten you, like dew from the womb of the morning. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Ezra's chapter 2, reading from verse 42. I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion a great multitude, which I could not number, and they were all praising the Lord with songs. In their midst was a young man of great stature, taller than any of the others, and on the head of each of them he placed a crown, but he was more exalted than they. And I was held spellbound. Then I asked an angel, Who are these, my Lord? He answered and said to me, These are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal, and they have confessed the name of the Lord. Now they are being crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the angel, Who is that young man who places crumbs on them and put palms in their hands? He answered and said to me, He is the Son of God whom they confessed in the world. So I began to praise those who had stood valiantly for the name of the Lord. Then the angel said to me, Go, tell my people how great and how many are the wonders of the Lord God which you have seen. Here ends the first reading. The Benedictus, page 40. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, 
and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We will now have the second lesson from the New Testament. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. Jesus said to his disciples, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear testimony before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you up, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not who you speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will deliver up brother to death and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Here ends the reading. The Cantico, God's Plan of Salvation, can be found on page 56. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with all the spiritual blessings of heaven. God chose us in Christ before the world was made to be holy and blameless and to live by his love in his presence. God planned through Jesus Christ to bring us to himself as his children that we might praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the beloved. In Christ, we gain redemption through his blood. Our sins are forgiven. How rich is the grace of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Some words from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter, the 22nd verse. And you shall be hated by all people for my name's sake, but they that endure to the end shall be saved. You shall be hated by all people for my name's sake, but they that endure to the end shall be saved. Today we observe the feast of St. Fabian. I believe a little, of, little is known of St. Fabian by most of us, but he would have been Pope in the third century, sometime around the year 250 AD. And his election of, as Pope is very, a very interesting story because it is told that when they were looking for a Pope, a crowd gathered and then a dove came and lighted on the head of Fabian and the people in the crowd shouted, he is worthy, he is worthy, this is the one. Fabian was not a priest, he was not ordained or anything, but he became the Pope and served God faithfully. He brought about many changes in the church, 
but he also suffered for his faith. We are told that he was persecuted and eventually died at the hand of Decius, the emperor. And what our readings for today are pointing us toward is our call as Christians in this world that this faith that we claim, this faith that we hold on to, came about through the blood of many people. Many people gave their lives for the sake of this church. I know it is hard to fathom in today's world, especially in the part, in the part of our world where persecution of Christians is not an ordinary thing or a thing that happens on a daily basis. In fact, many of us live in countries that we refer to as Christian societies. But when persons like Fabian and others were proclaiming their Christian faith, Christianity was actually outlawed. It was not even something to be practiced openly in the Roman Empire. But yet these people held firm to their faith, trusting in their Lord's words that they who endure to the end will be saved. We get this message coming out of the book of Esdras. Esdras would be one of those books that we encounter in the Apocrypha, which came up in what we refer to as the intertestamental period, the time between the end of the Old Testament and the writing of the New. And here we have Esdras expressing this deep faith that those persons who hold on to their faith, those persons who die for the sake of God, they are the ones who will be established in his kingdom. The book of Revelation will pick up on this in chapter 7. If you read Esdras and Revelation side by side, you'll see that the writer of Revelation obviously knew this text because in chapter 7, it is the writer of Revelation who quotes the words of Esdras and says, when he's standing at the gate and the angel asks him, who are these and where have they come from? He said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And therefore they are before the throne of God day and night. That was the faith of those early followers. So much so that a saying emerged in the early church, the blood of the saints is the fuel of the church. Because when people saw them giving their lives, when people saw that these people are being persecuted, but yet they're holding on to this faith, they said there must be something about this. Because the early Christians suffered greatly, great tortures. It was not only crucifixion which our Lord suffered, which many Christians did suffer, because crucifixion was supposed to be a symbol for others that if you follow this faith, this is what will happen to you. And so people will tell you stories of when you're walking through the streets in the Roman Empire. Sometimes there'll be people on crosses hung for days. There'll be rotten bodies because there'll be a reminder that this is not something to follow. But there were other tortures as well. They were thrown in prison, as the hymn writer says, mocked, imprisoned, stoned, tormented, sawn asunder, slain with sword. All of these are things that happened to Christians. But they were holding firm to our Lord's words. They who endure to the end shall be saved. Though we do not suffer persecution of that kind, at least in this part of the world, there are still some Christians who are being persecuted in the worst ways for their faith. But though we do not suffer in that way, we are still called to endure because there are still things that are seeking to destroy God's people in this world. There are ideologies that are emerging in the world that are seeking to take us away from walking the path that leads to eternal life. And so we too have to be as resolute as those early saints, not to take our faith for granted. You know, when you think of how they, through all that was going on, through all the, the threats on their lives, still held firm to God, we in our time, we take these things as though they were nothing. And so even attending church becomes a problem for some of us now. We take it for granted. But remember people like Fabian. They did not have the freedom and the opportunities that we had. And they held firm to their faith. What is preventing us from being resolute in our faith? And do not think 
that the punishment comes in this life. The punishment comes when we find ourselves shut out from the kingdom of God. And so we are being called to remember persons like Fabian and give thanks to God for his life, work, and witness that they, in the face of grave danger, even in the face of death, held firm to this faith so that it could be transmitted to us. We, in our time, must ensure that we are able to transmit this faith for generations to come. Do not give up on our faith. Do not give in, even when persons around us are falling. Even when persons are seeking to lead us astray, we are being called to hold firm to our faith in Almighty God. Fabian held firm to the end. And this is not something he begged for. He was standing in the crowd, a dove came on his head, and they said, you are hope. But he took up the mantle. He took up the mantle, and he served God, and he helped to build his church. We too are now given that responsibility. We now are being called to ensure that this Christian faith reaches the ends of the earth. And we must not compromise. Jesus told his disciples, do not plan beforehand what you are to say. In other words, do not try to circumvent anything by any trickery. Just stand firm and hold on to your faith and I will bring you through. Recognizing that we are not to fear those who can only kill the body, but fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Hold firm to your faith in God, even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of the negativity, even when people are trying to destroy you. Fabian did this. And so centuries after, we are still celebrating what he did. We are still giving thanks to God for his faith, which has transmitted this Christian faith to us. We now must ensure, like Fabian, that through our faith and through our works example, others may come to know the presence of Christ in their lives. Amen. Let us now confess our beliefs in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 42. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Suffrages on page 44, form B. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And the of your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. 
let your will be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. The Collect for St. Fabian. O God, in your providence, you singled out the holy martyr Fabian as worthy to be chief pastor of your people and guided him so to strengthen your church that it stood fast in the day of persecution. Grant that those whom you call to any ministry in the church may be obedient to your call in all humility and be enabled to carry out their tasks with diligence and faithfulness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it, may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Prayer of Dedication on page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 825.
The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. And now to God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit you this day and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen.